Hey everyone. Welcome back to Code Rash with Gaurav. Today, we're diving into something really exciting that's transforming how developers integrate external services with AI applications. You have an API. Maybe you built it. Maybe you're using a third-party service. And you're wondering, how can I expose this to AI models seamlessly? Well, that's where MCP servers come in. In this video, we're going to understand exactly what MCP is, why it's different from regular APIs, and most importantly, we'll walk through a live demo where we take a real API and convert it into an MCP server, then consume it using an MCP client. By the end of this video, you'll understand what MCP is and why it matters, the key differences between APIs and MCP servers, step-by-step -step how to convert an API to an MCP server, how to build an MCP client to consume it, real-world use cases and benefits. Let's get started. Understanding APIs versus MCP servers. Let's start with what we already know, traditional APIs. When you build a REST API, you're creating fixed endpoints. For example, here's how it works from a consumability perspective. Documentation-driven. You write documentation that tells developers exactly which endpoints exist. Hard-coded integration. Developers must write code against your specific endpoints. Static contracts. Once defined, the API contract is fixed. Stateless. Each request is completely independent. When a client makes a request, it needs to know the exact endpoint URL, the exact parameters required, the response format, error handling specifics. This works great for traditional client-server communication. But here's the problem when you want to expose APIs to AI models. Imagine you have Claude or another LLM that needs to call your API. Right now, you'd need to manually describe the API in a system prompt or documentation. Tell the model exactly which endpoints to call and how. Handle parsing of responses in a specific format. Build custom logic for each API integration. This is brittle. Why? Because if your API changes, you need to update the LLM's instructions. Each API has a different structure, so you need custom code for each one. The model can't dynamically discover what's available. There's no standardized way to handle tools and resources. This brings us to MCP. The model context protocol solves these problems. What is MCP? MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It's an open source standard created by Anthropic that standardizes how AI applications connect to external tools, data, and services. Think of it like this. If APIs are like custom phone lines with different plugs, MCP is like USB, a universal standard that lets any device connect to any service. MCP has three main components. MCP host, the AI application, Claude Desktop, ChatGPT, or your custom app. MCP client, an internal component that manages one-to-one -one connections to servers. MCP server, your service exposing capabilities via the MCP protocol. The key innovation? Instead of static endpoints, MCP servers dynamically describe what they can do. When a client connects, the server tells the client, here are my tools and what they do. Here are my resources and how to access them. Here are my prompts to help users accomplish tasks. Here's the most important part. MCP is stateful and conversational. When you're using an API, you make a request, get a response, and that's it. But with MCP, the server and client have an ongoing conversation. For example, first request, get me user data for ID42. Second request, now show me their recent orders. The server remembers the context from the first request. This is crucial for AI applications because AI works through conversation and context. Okay, enough talking. Let's get into action. Our live demo and the MCP server we are going to build today will be in three steps. 
First, we will write a sample API that should be converted into an MCP server. Second, using that API, we shall write an MCP server. And finally, third, to test this out, we will write an MCP client to test this end to end. We are going to use Composer model. In my previous videos, I have shown how Composer model boosts productivity to X. I will drop a link to the video in the description about Kasra 2.0 version. We are going to create an API, an MCP server and an MCP client. For these, I have created project folders and let's start with our API. We are building an API that can return current temperature of a city and also via another endpoint, the forecast for five days. To begin with, we are going to have only three cities supported. Also, we are specific about the API being written in Python using fast API framework. Now that our prompt looks complete, let's give it to the agent. So the agent has started working on the API and we see some code being generated. Code for the API is ready and the agent is finishing up the readme file. It is done with the command and let's accept the changes coming in and let's review. We see fast API being used like we asked for. We have the app description and initialization here and some sample weather data with real time dates and randomization. Here we see some class definitions for the all the data objects we are going to deal with. And here is the whole documentation of the API defined over a REST endpoint. If a new consumer wants to know about what this API is meant for, this root based path gives a clear and LLM friendly description. Further, we have our feature specific endpoints where given a city, we can get the weather data for today and the forecast. To run the project, let's install the requirements under virtual environment and to do so, I am asking the agent to create an environment and activate that. The requirements for this demo API are pretty basic. Now that we have our virtual environment set up, let's ask the agent to install the needed modules. We have our requirements met. Let's run the project. I am going to ask the agent to start the server. The API is running now. We are going to use the cursors built in browser to test the API. If I click on the API base URL, I see the browser opened in a new inline tab within cursor. And that's what I like a lot. It is a productivity boost. Let's test a few more endpoints by querying the temperature of a city and its forecast. It all looks good here and we are all set with API. Now, let's jump into writing the MCP server. For writing the demo MCP server, I am going to use the agent and I will be specific about the fast MCP framework. We already have the API running and we will use that as a context for writing the MCP server. Before we hit execute on the prompt, Let's look at fast MCP documentation and learn that a bit. Fast MCP is a Python based MCP framework that enables developers to build MCP clients and servers at a rapid pace. It abstracts a lot of complexities and provides simple interfaces. Exposing REST endpoints or APIs as tools in MCP terms is pretty easy with this framework. Likewise, connecting to MCP server via MCP client and handling the underlying transport protocol can be easily managed. Now that we know what MCP is, what is fast MCP and we have an API running, let's convert all of that into an MCP server. Cursor is now searching the internet for learning about fast MCP. It already knows about the API details as we have it in the context. We see that MCP service code is being generated and there you go. It is done. Let's review what we have here. We see that a server file is generated with three tools available. Get temperature, get forecast, list cities. And we have one resource exposed from the server. 
when an AI agent or MCP client will invoke a tool, it will internally call the weather API. But now we have it as an MCP tool. Let's review the generated code a bit to understand it better. We see the MCP instance created from fast MCP. The tools are made available via the at mcp.tool decorator. In our first tool, we have the get temperature utility with a lot of LLM and client-friendly documentation. It has a HTTP client to invoke our sample API. The tool simply invokes our API and returns it back as a readable and language model-friendly format. Now to start the MCP server, we need a virtual environment and we need to install the requirements. We are asking the agent to take care of that, like we did for the API. Once the environment is up, we will switch to that and install the requirements. And it is done. The virtual environment is up. Let us install the requirements through the agent. Alright, our requirements are installed and we are set to start the MCP server. It says that to serve our MCP server, we must have the API running and that's right. This is an error case and it should be carefully handled when you are wrapping external APIs as MCP servers. Let's start the server via the agent. And the server is up. Let's review what the agent has done. We have the server up with three tools and one resource. The server can accept connection on the MCP protocol and can be easily connected to via readily available MCP clients like Cloud Desktop. Next, we are going to build is an MCP client to test our MCP server end to end. We could have used Cloud Desktop, but for this demo video, let's also see how to write an MCP client using fast MCP framework. Let us write a contextual prompt to the agent and hit run. Agent will search the internet for the knowledge about fast MCP framework for writing MCP clients. And we see some code getting generated now. Let us accept the incoming changes and review the generated code. The client code starts with pointing to the server from the local directory here, but ideally, you would connect to remote MCP servers. The client is initialized in the main function and it is logging a lot of information it queries and receives from the MCP server. It is first listing all the available tools and calling them one by one to test the integration. After you list the tools, the MCP client already knows about the available tools and the parameters required to invoke them and this is where magic happens. In a real work project, you would give this list of tools to an LLM and let LLM decide which tool to invoke and with what parameters so that we achieve autonomous agentic behavior. In our next videos, let's do that. For now, we will just run our MCP client to invoke all the available tools from the MCP server one by one. And to do that, we again need a virtual environment and all the requirements to be met. So let's get that first. We have everything we need to run our MCP client. So let's do that. The agent changed a few logs while running it. 
I am going to accept that change. Let us review the output. The client was successfully able to connect to the server. We are able to list out the available tools and what they do. The MCP client is able to invoke the tools and as a test, we are able to query the temperature of New York, which is a supported city. So this was the end to end flow of the MCP client and server. Before we end this video, let me also walk you through a visual representation of what we just did. If we try to understand the whole interaction between client and server in terms of human interaction, the traditional API would need a developer to curate the flow and always explain what API needs to be invoked according to the use case. While in the case of an MCP server, the available tools are automatically discovered and the caller can decide what tools fit the use case. The underlying protocol is JASO RPC, so that enables any MCP client and server to talk to each other seamlessly. So that is it for today. We learned about MCP and learned how you can create MCP servers for your APIs. If you are enjoying the videos on the AI topics and trends, do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Till then have a good one.